Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to present another example related to the test of independence. Right here, a researcher wanted to study the relationship between gender and owning the cell phones. So here she took a sample of 2,000 adults and obtained the information given in the following table. And this is just a 2 by 2 um, contingency table. Now at 5% significant level, can you conclude that gender and owning a cell phone? So here is the first attribute, gender. And this is the second attribute, which is owning a cell phone, are related for all adults. So when you talk about... <coughs> are related so this statement here uh, is referring to the alternative hypothesis all right so now let's start off with writing down the hypothesis statements h null and h1 and for this one here we know that these are the two attributes so we can say that gender and owning a cell phone well, we can write down in this manner. So this is the first attribute. This is the second attribute. Gender and owning a cell phone are related. Alright, and uh, the null hypothesis is going to be gender and owning a cell phone are not related. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's the first step, step one. Right, next, uh, let's move on to the second step, which is on step two here. What we need to do is we need to obtain the statistical test, and it's going to be looking like this. According to the formula, it is observed minus expected square root over expected value. And before we can get we can get on with that. We need to find all the expected values for each different cells given here. And let's start off with finding the total of each row and column. Okay, so here it's going to be total. And therefore at the bottom is another total. So 640 plus 440. The answer is going to be 1080. 450 plus 470 is going to be 920. And if you add up these two values here, the answer is going to be equal to 2000, which is the total sample that the researcher took when studying this um, topic. Yeah. Now, um, for this one, 640 plus 450, the answer is 1090. And 440 plus 470, it is 910. And if you add up these two values here, you should be able to get the same total, which is equal to 2000. Right, and we know that in order to find the expected value, what you need to do is you need to follow the formula given here, which is R times C over T. So T here represents this a big total. R and C here represents the, the total for specific specific row and the total for specific column. So here the totals depends on the position of the cell. For example, if the cell here is at this point, that means the row corresponds to this cell is going to be this one. And the, the column total for this cell is going to be this one. So for the expected value, it's going to be 1090 times 1080 over 2000 and you will get the value is 5 let me just I need a bit more space actually okay so for this cell here for the cell here the row corresponds to this cell is this one and the row, the total corresponds to this cell is this one. So we need to find um, the result of multiplying 1090 with 1080 over 2000. And you will get the result is 588.6. 
that's as the expected value now for this cell here it's going to be 910 times 1080 over 2000 and the answer is 491.4 for this call for this cell here you need to multiply 1090 with 920 over 2000 and the answer is 501.4 and finally for this one you need to multiply 910 with 920 over 2000 so this is 418.6 these are the expected values and we can use the results now to compute the statistical test so here what we have to do next we're going to uh, have 640 minus 588.6 u squared over 5 oops over 588.6 observe minus expected u squared over expected value now go on with the next one is 440 minus 491.4 squared over 491.4 and you just continue on till the end of the last cell and the last cell is going to be 470 minus 418.6 square it over 418.6 and the result that you will get is going to be 21.446 Okay, so right now let's move on to the second step. Assuming that you consider the sorry the third step, assuming that you consider the traditional approach, our job is to find the critical value. Now the degrees of freedom is going to be in this case is going to be r minus one over c minus one. R is the number of rows, which is going to be equal to two, so two minus one column is the number c here represents the number of columns we have two columns two minus one and so the degrees of freedom is going to be equal to one and we know that the chi-square distribution curve when degrees of freedom is one is going to look like this somehow okay and um since Test of independence is a right tail test. We know that the critical region is going to be just on the right end of the distribution. And the area is going to be equal to 5%. So this is 0 0.05. So our job is to find the critical value, which is the value on this horizontal axis. The value of this one on the horizontal axis, such that the area is 0 0.05. If you consider this point towards the the right direction okay so um in order to find this particular value what we can do is we can refer to the chi-square distribution table and uh you will see that 0 0.05 is at this point degrees of freedom is one so the particular value is going to be 3.841 yeah Okay, so let's go back to our example. So critical value is 3.841. So this is the point. Okay, I'm just going to use the red pen. So, so this is 3.841 and this is the critical value. Okay, for critical value is 3.841. Now, the fourth step, we need to decide whether the null hypothesis should be rejected or not. Step four, we're going to make a decision. And that decision is based on comparing the statistical test or the test statistic with the critical value. Now, obviously, the test statistic here is going to, to fall in the critical region. It's going to be very far ahead from 3.841 therefore we can see that since the test statistic falls into the critical region therefore 
educational is able to be rejected and the last step is going to be conclusion step five we see that there is enough evidence there is enough evidence to say that the statement here applies there is enough evidence to say that gender and owning a cell phone are related Alright, I think that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching.